She seemed like a dream that was now filled with laughter. On her lips there were songs. The humans themselves said, What marvels the Lord were for them. What marvels the Lord were for us. Indeed, we are glad. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage and the streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out, full of tears, carrying seeds of the sowing. They come back, they come back, full of song, carrying their shoes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Lord build our house and guard our city. If and the Lord does, does not build the house, the land of its builders labor. If the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain does the watchman keep it. In vain is your earlier rising, your going later to rest. We will dwell for the bread you eat, when you are gifts of his blood on the summer. Truly, sons are a gift from the Lord, a blessing through the womb. Indeed, the sons of the youth are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Oh, the happiness of the man who has filled his quiver with these arrows. He will have no cause for shame when he receives his disposes to the great grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be. Amen. May the Lord build our house and guard our city. He is the firstborn of all creation. In every way, the prophecy is this. Let us give thanks to the Father for having made you worthy to share the law of his saints and light. He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved Son. Through him we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creatures. In him everything in heaven and on earth was created, things visible and invisible. All were created through him, all were created for him. He is before all else that is. In him everything continues to be. It is he who is said of the church. He who is the beginning, the first one of the dead, so that privacy may be his. It pleased God to make absolute fullness reside in him, and by means of him to reconcile everything in his person, both on earth and in his heavens, making peace through the blood of his cross. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. He is the firstborn of all creation. In every way, the primacy is His. Wisdom is from above, is first of all innocent. It is also peaceable, lenient, docile rich in sympathy and kindly deeds that are its fruit, impartial and sincere. The harvest of justice is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. In the midst of the church, he spoke with elegance. In the midst of the church, he spoke with eloquence. The Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. He spoke with eloquence. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the midst of the church, he spoke with eloquence. The blessed doctor, St. John, 
light of holy church and lover of God's law, pray to the Son of God for us. I so proclaim the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God as my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his holy servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, as the doctor of St. John, light of the Holy Church, and lover of God's law, pray to the Son of God for us. Jesus Christ is worthy of all praise, for he was appointed high priest among men and their representative before God. We honor him, and in our weakness, we pray. Bring salvation, salvation to your people, Lord. You marvelously illuminated your church through distinguished leaders and holy men and women. Let Christians rejoice always in such splendor. Bring salvation to your people, Lord. You forgive the sins of your people when their holy leaders like Moses sought your compassion. Through their intercession, continue to purify and sanctify your holy people. Bring salvation to your people, Lord. In the midst of their brothers and sisters, you anointed your holy ones and filled them with the Holy Spirit. Fill all leaders of your people with the same spirit. Bring salvation to your people, Lord. You yourself are the whole, only visible possession of our holy pastors. Let none of them, one at the price of your blood, remain far from you. Bring salvation to your people, Lord. And what else shall we pray for this evening? Uh, safe travels for uh, Pete and Rod. May they reach their destinations and come home safely. Jesus' name we pray. Bring salvation, salvation to your people, Lord. Lord. For Richard Double D, Deacon Richard Double D and his wife Bev. And for Deacon Miguel Espinosa and his wife Rosa. I uh, saw them today and um, still in ICU, still in very critical condition. For a miracle, for their health and their well being, being for their healing, we pray to the Lord. We salvation to your people, Lord. I'd like to pray for uh, a parishioner's really good friend, Jennifer Freeman. May she rest in peace and her family she has uh, four young children surviving so i just pray for that family and for her soul we pray to the lord we bring salvation to your people lord for all those that are ill that had surgery especially uh, our, our deacon provider we pray for bring salvation to your people lord I'd like to pray for the young lady that had multiple seizures at Mass today, upstairs in the uh, Tower of Hope, Kathleen. Uh, she was taken to the hospital. Just prayers for her, prayers for her family, prayers for healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray for salvation, salvation to your people, Lord. I'd like to pray for all those who are injured, uh, especially the little girls from the Academy. Academy. My soul, Sydney, and the rest of the too. Lord, just help them heal and get back and uh, continue just to guide and bless them. We pray to the Lord. Bring us salvation to your people, Lord. For uh, Delmi Galvez, she's a Christian, and unfortunately she lost her son. He had a stroke um, years back. He finally passed in his Oscar for Delmi Galvez. Bring us salvation to your people, Lord. I'd like to pray for the attention of Pope Francis and also the intention of our Bishop Kevin and his friend. Bring salvation to your people, Lord. For all the fears and dreams we 
we have in our heart, and for all those that we did not mention, we pray to the Lord. Pray Bring salvation to the people, Lord. The shepherd of your church, keep your flock from being snatched out of your hand. Through them, you gave your flock eternal life. Save those who have died, those for whom you gave up your life. Bring salvation to your people, Lord. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us offer the prayer Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, the strength of all who trust in you. You made John Chrysostom renowned for his eloquence and heroic in his sufferings. May we learn from his teaching and gain courage from his patient endurance. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Who prowl about the world seeking the ruined souls. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray, pray for us. us. Saint Joseph, pray, pray for us. us. Saint John Chrysostom, pray, pray, pray for us. us. On God's heavenly angels and saints, pray, pray, pray for us. us. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, everybody. Good to pray. How are you feeling? Good. Anybody getting excited? Yeah. Nervous, nervous. nervous. Yeah. Yeah. doubts, <laughs> fears. Yeah. Nervous. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, keep going. <laughs> Batting a thousand so far. <laughs> well, it's all natural, right? Yeah. Think back to your wedding day. Yeah. And you made it this far, so you're okay. Yeah. God will provide. I think I can remember being very nervous the morning of. Yeah. You can start praying. That's the room, and uh, just got better and better. And then you go out, and you hear the organ playing, and you hear the whole congregation singing, and you just feel all this spirit come upon you. And it's going to be very beautiful. The whole every moment you're going to love. Uh, so it's something to look forward to. Just be at peace. You don't have to do much right now. Just, just don't mess up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> No, everything's going to be fine. I'm starting to get nervous now. Exactly, yeah, exactly. We will have the microphone on tonight, so uh, if you want to try it again, or yeah, if you haven't gone yet, it's a good chance to practice. So next week is the first practicum, right? Yes. Okay. And, yeah, St. Juliana, and we'll, we'll do something like this where we'll assign you different roles, and you're just going to do it, and we're going to we're going to help each other. So bring your deacon at the mass guide. Um, who has a funeral rites book here? <laughs> you have one already. Okay. If you have one, bring it. Okay. If you don't have one, maybe you're going to get one. So uh, from somebody. So I wouldn't say go out and rush and buy it right now. You won't have a funeral on that Sunday or the Monday. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, probably can borrow one from somebody. Okay, so I think we'll we'll do the funeral rites. Would it be helpful to review baptism again? Sure. Yes. Baptism. Modesto is going to do the mass for his, so um, we can wait for that. If we have time, we can do a walkthrough at the mass. Sometimes it's good to do it in a different setting yeah, because you'll be called to serve at different parishes sometimes, so you have to know your way around the sacristy. And I'd like to have it where you all are setting up the Mass from scratch. There are times when I get to Mass, and John and Israel, you've been to our parish. You get there at 6.15 for the 6.30 Mass. Nobody's there. 
you got to get everything set up. So you have to know what to do as a deacon. So when the priest comes in five minutes before, you're ready to go. Joe, you do that here. Yeah. I come in a half an hour early. Well, that's good. Scramble. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit harder to wake up for me at six weeks. Maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do it when I was a candidate. <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah. It's better to be there 30 minutes early. You're right. Yeah. You know. One or both practicum going to give us a chance to do uh, uh, purification of the vessels. We'll do that. Yes. Yes. That's the one I just that would be great. Okay. We'll do that. What else? Somebody mentioned something about the ordo. Um, the ordo is a quick thing, I think. When you receive the gifts. The, I'll set up the vessel. Yeah. The, the, uh, yeah, for the deacon about all of us. We may receive the gifts and set up the company. Okay. Yeah, we'll go through that. Is there an app for the order where it actually gives you the pages where you're not trying to dig around uh, the way it's set up with something easier? Well, the order is just in chronological order. So you just yeah. go to the date and put a, a marker in it and you have it for the next day. I don't know about an app. I don't I think the Google Yellow Page. Uh, no spiritual Sundays for you anymore. Um, we will have one for the class of. Um, you weren't scheduled for one this weekend, were you? September 17th is our last class. No. No. What? No, we're going to be here if you want to come. We'll have the class of 2028 here. But uh, no. Yeah. Get your spiritual nourishment with uh, at your parish, and okay, so we'll cover some of those. Training for adoration. Adoration, you'd like that? Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and benediction. Okay, we'll do that. I okay. I have a few days after ordination, right? Yeah, you want to know how to do that right away, and um, do you have a, a guide for that? To the missile. I have a one-page sheet that I I bring with me for to the um, altar as I kneel and sing, and um, yeah, yeah, it's hard copy. I'll try and get a copy scan for you, and uh, you can have By the that. Way, what, what's the best way to learn those supposedly common hints that I don't know? <laughs> That's why I carry. I carry. I don't know the Latin. I know the English, um, but I because um, I always screw up doing them in English. But some people really like the Latin, so yeah, I, I it think it's like practice. It <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a that's a test on October thirteenth. Yeah. Uh, you know, in Latin, you, you, you pass. <laughs> um, yeah. The only way to do it is to practice. Practice. Yeah. I mean the the melody is the same the hit, the, the notes are the same yeah. just the words so I have that printout that I'm talking to you about has them in English and in Latin so you can you can uh, use that if you'd like now let's see here you all know how to preside at morning prayer and evening prayer but you'll be asked to do that especially during Holy Week and have a guide so you should know if your parish has a subscription, a license for the printouts, and know how to access those and use those. And, um, so yeah, we'll go over some of those things next week, give you a chance to practice. And um, working with, with the microphone and, you know, and uh, proclaiming, watching the altar service, you know, when it, it's time for the collect or the daydreaming. Yeah. yeah. How do you manage that? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> especially if they're new. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, thank you for that. I want to make sure it's valuable use of your time. So, it'll be my parish, and uh, I'll show you around there. And I think um, it'll be it'll be good. The one with Modesto is at the cathedral, I believe. Here. Yeah. All right. Who wants to? Go, Bob. Uh,
Good job, Bob. Make sure the light's green on the mic. Are you doing this one for tomorrow? Yes. Cool. I gotta give a homily at the bar. Can I borrow it? <laughs> well, just wait till after. Yeah, let's see how long. <laughs> Let me check the camera. Which which are you doing numbers? Or are you doing the gospel or um, I'm doing uh, the, the first reading and the gospel. Okay, well, you're very similar. Yeah. yeah, the green light is on. Can you scroll through this so they can read? I'm gonna get the live stream started. Sure. Testing. Do you guys want that? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello? Hola. Hola. <laughs> I've always admired the fine balance that uh, some professional athletes can master. Take Magic Johnson, for instance. He has all that size and strength, and yet he balances that with, with this great finesse and gracefulness. It's not overpowering. You know, just the right amount of force behind that pass, that no-look pass to, to get that on the spot. And then, and then there's um, Patrick Mahomes. So as he's, he's on the move, trying to, the, the pocket is closing, and he's on the move, he starts improvising. He has this awesome arm strength but rarely does he use full force with that. In fact, sometimes he just flicks the ball, but he gets that pass, it's catchable. Balance and beauty. I can't help but observe that this is a manifestation of God's glory because God is the ultimate source of balance, order, and beauty in the world. So it makes sense that our faith is like that. It's not one-dimensional. God strikes a balance between suffering and celebration, judgment and mercy. Our faith is often both and instead of either or. My readings for this, for this day is the feast day of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Today, we look at the cross as the universal image of our faith. We display it prominently in our churches and homes. Artists have turned it into a thing of beauty for procession. And also, it's a beautiful work of art, the highlight of our rosaries. But to the first Christians, there was no beauty 
in the cross. Not primarily a symbol, they lived it. It was a grotesque reality right outside the city gates, rotting flesh raised up as a threat to all might violate Roman authority. For this reason, artists seldom depicted the crucifixion for hundreds of years. It was too soon, too raw. It wasn't until the fourth century when St. Helena and her son, Roman Emperor Constantine, were responsible for recovering the site of Christ's tomb and discovering three crosses in the excavation. Legend holds that the cross in which Jesus died on was identified when it's touched, healed a dying woman. The cross has been venerated ever since. That's what this feast day is about, the balance between agony and suffering on the one hand and God's love, mercy, and beauty on the other. In today's gospel, Jesus tells Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This is a reference to our first reading where the people of Israel are rebelling against God, expressing spite rather than being grateful for being rescued from slavery and given manna from heaven for survival in the desert. In the reading, they complain, we are disgusted with this wretched food. The Lord then sends down poisonous snakes to kill some of them. The people get Moses to pray for them, so the Lord instructs him to create an image of the serpent and mount it on a pole. Whoever looks at the bronze serpent lives. Bishop Barron has a theory about why people are healed in that story. He says that scene, facing that terrible thing which is terrorizing you, in itself is healing. Just like facing our fears or acknowledging our addictions is the first step to overcoming them. So back to the gospel. Jesus compares himself with the bronze serpent again. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Lifted up can only mean one thing, the Christ on the cross. So what is the cross? The cross represents multiple things. In the eyes of the first century Christians, it represented horror, violence, humiliation, and suffering. Bishop Barron points out that the cross represents all the hate, violence, injustice, selfishness, anger that we give into. When we look at the cross, we should be reminded that our sin caused Jesus to be put on that cross. When we look at the cross with that in mind, like looking at the bronze serpent, it is in itself healing. Only then can we repent. But that's not the only meaning. Our faith has a balance. The cross also represents God's infinite love and mercy. Arguably the most famous and powerful verse in all of scripture follows in today's gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. In this word believes, in the Greek has a sense of trust so that everyone who trusts in him might have eternal life. Yes, our faith is not one dimensional. In humility, we need to recognize our fallen state and our sinfulness and rejoice and be at peace because our God is a God of infinite love and mercy. And he is already uh, defeated sin and death. So our faith is balance, beauty, trust. Thank you, Bob. Watch the recording. Do you have any feedback from Bob? Good. I think you have a good connection from the beginning. You know, a little bit less enough. So I didn't know that about the fourth century. Quite interesting. Yeah. Good story. Uh, let's give him some objective feedback. His voice. 
on a scale of one to ten level is the volume ten a little more yeah okay was there inflection variety sufficient I didn't notice many connectors many ums or, or other words like that <laughs> yeah, he did well there how about his hands natural yeah, posture was good how about his face he looked down a little bit but like i i, I think he's it's a lot of theology into it so i, I think it's very hard to see so, yeah, so yeah. i think it's, you know, it's reasonable that he, he did look down yes I saw that too. At the end, you closed really strong because you were conversing with the congregation. I, I, I struggle with. Um, usually, I just read, and uh, but I made an extra effort to 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 look up and memorize, or or not necessarily memorize, but at least uh, be able to do it without reading. The front and the end. That's what I tried to do today. That's perfect. I think that's a way to start. If you're used to reading, you have a story or two in your homily or the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Just as you're telling a friend that story, you're not reading something to your friend. You're telling the story. And you can do that here as well. So he did it. That was good. So Bob, you might want to try when you do read quite a bit, which is fine. But for each section, usually you have a core thought in each section. I want to just pause it and make that point and then move on to the next section. Yeah. Just a little pause helps to really emphasize. Let it sink in. Yeah. I knew Magic Johnson. I didn't know the other guy. Because I don't watch I don't watch sports, but I guess I'm weird, so you guys probably all know. <laughs> I kind of know who he is. I think he's he's got big hair, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Chiefs? Yeah. Chiefs. Chiefs. Okay, yeah. All right, good. Yeah. I know something. Super Bowl chance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, am, I am weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Fook. Here's your microphone. Let me go check it before you get started. And let me bring up your reading. You lost it? You lost it. Yeah, this this thing is uh, temperamental here. Oh, did I touch it? I'm gonna have to talk to the facilities manager. Does anybody know who he is? Pete Morales. Are you right watching at, on? Right. At, no, up. Up. Yeah. Right there, right? Yes. Oh, there we go. The gospel, please. The gospel. Too I'm far. Put this in your pocket. Yes. Luke eight sixteen. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I should. Huh? <laughs> testing, testing. It's working. Very good. All right. So um, before I come to class, I asked my uh, daughter to uh, hear a meow. And when I speak, lights, light, lights, lives, and say, be careful. People may think of heads, lies. <laughs> so, so it's all about the uh, today, today's gospel. So when talking about lights, I got it, right? People may relate it to their own experience or what it can be used for, how or when. And other may think of its characteristics based on their knowledge, especially for like the engineer like Chris, right? And uh, in a history class, I recall 
from a middle school. Um, um, a story of a dynasty ambassadors recounted a lamb being backlit and light shining on the ground after he visited France in 1863. So the king, the ambassador group, the counselor, they were busted in laughter. And he tried, he tried to convince them to believe his story, but they say it's nonsensical. It doesn't make sense to them because at that time in Vietnam, we used oil lamp. We did not have electricity yet, no light bulbs. So you don't have to say it out loud or raise your hand, but what do you think when we talk about lights right now? Today, Jesus tells us to live our lives as a lamp shining the light of kindness, humility, compassion, understanding, mercy, accompanying those in need, defending those who need help for justice. And then to some people, it, is, it doesn't make sense to them because why do I have to do that? Why do I have to do, why they do have to do so? But what about us to the faith community? Do we live what Jesus taught us to do? Let's ask ourselves what lights we want to shine from our lamps to become a light to illuminate the world, to proclaim our faith in Jesus daily. We ourselves at some point of time will run out of oil or a source of lightning of our lamps. So we must connect ourselves with Jesus to the indefinite, indefinite source. Having Jesus as our source of our light in our lives. This is what I mentioned from the beginning. <laughs> It's essential. We must live in communion with Jesus, who is the light of the world. Whoever follows Jesus will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8, verse 12. And last Sunday, when I assist with baptism, a rite of baptism, each candidate received a lighted candle and the invitation from the a celebrant. Receive the light of Christ. It's, it reminded me that I was baptized. And we are all baptized. We belong to the light. Or rather, we are the light. And Jesus is our source of our light. It is our duty to illuminate and repel darkness by our faith. What does it mean to illuminate? by our faith. For one, it is to serve order rather than to be served, to seek first, to understand, then to be understood. For another, it is to work for justice or to save life from abortion. As Jesus said, take care then how you hear. Let's discern, let's reflect on what God is calling us to do. Lord Jesus made a candle burning brightly on the day of baptism, always shine on our lives so that our lives always reflect your light to people around us, whether they see it on the lamppost or backlit on the ceiling. Starting with voice, on a level of 1 to 10, what's the volume? 8, how to quit, okay. I thought more like a 6 or 7, um, I was in the back, but it was it was okay, it was good. How about the pace? Good pace? 
Any other feedback on voice? Dave? I think, you know, just because the, the language barrier that we have, yes, Vietnamese and English, Spanish, that I thought he did a great job slowing it down. Yes. So I could hear his, his uh, syntax, his vocabulary, is slightly different than English speaking. So I, I thought it was very good that you were able to slow that down and still uh, get the picture for us. Yeah. You know, in content, I like when you brought your family in it to your daughter, and you also did some self appreciating parts, uh, you know, about life and life. I thought, and, so, and I think it also brought joy to your face and it started you out in a good, good way. That was really great. Yeah, really great. It put people at ease and they understand. And, um, yeah, you, if there's a word you get hung up on, maybe you can look for a synonym. I don't know what you would use instead of light, maybe lamp or something. Or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I explained it that way, but it was fine. People, I got it. And you explained it early on, so it was very good. You smiled. Yeah, good posture. Good use your hands. It's good delivery. Any other feedback? Suggestions? <laughs> how would you? How would it be different in Vietnamese outside of being in Vietnamese? I think it would be flow better. It would flow better. Most of your preaching will be in Vietnamese, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And I do the reading, um, and I seems last week. So I have to start preparing stay away from from, yeah. uh, from reading too. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to do. No, second language. No, yeah. yeah. You'll just keep getting better and better. Yeah. It'll, it'll go well for you. All right. Good job. Next. Okay, Alfredo. In English or in Spanish? Spanish. Muy bien. Micrófono. Puede cambiar. Tengo aquí el power. Spoken language. Español de España o español de México. English of England or English of Garden Grove? Santa Ana. Santa Ana. <laughs> Santa Ana. <laughs> Voy a leer el Evangelio, eh? El Evangelio? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the PowerPoint set up. Now I'm going to show you the gospel. Si lo puedo leer. Sí. ¿O quieres leer el Evangelio? Uh -huh. Ok, está bien. He's going to read the gospel. Va a leerlo en español, pero aquí está en inglés. Here it is in English. He's going to read it, proclaim it in Spanish. Adelante, Alfredo. Entonces, ¿qué está bien? ¿no? Test. A ver, si voy. Test. ¿Está bien? Evangelio según San Lucas. Todos quedaron asombrados ante una tal intervención de Dios. Mientras todos quedaban admirados por las cosas que hacía, Jesús dijo a sus discípulos, Escuchen y recuerden lo que ahora les digo. El Hijo del Hombre va a ser entregado en manos de los hombres. Pero ellos no entendieron estas palabras. Algo les impedía comprender lo que significaban y no se atrevían a pedirle alguna aclaración. Hermanos, estamos celebrando la fiesta de San Jerónimo. 
es presbítero, padre y doctor de la iglesia. Y es bien importante conocer la vida de los santos, porque ellos nos ayudan en nuestra fe. Los santos son un ejemplo a seguir para nosotros. Son personas que admiramos mucho. ¿Y cómo era San Jerónimo? Bueno, primero San Jerónimo era una persona muy preparada, pero también era una persona que tenía un temperamento bien difícil, bien fuerte. Inclusive, él uh, tuvo problemas en la iglesia, tuvo problemas, um, era el secretario del Papa Damaso I y tuvo que dejar el puesto. Y él sabía lo que, el problema que tenía. Él inclusive se, se fue de Roma, estuvo un tiempo en una cueva haciendo penitencia. Él se golpeaba el cuerpo, él hacía mucha oración, pero no pudo arreglar su problema, su situación con el carácter. Lo que le ayudó mucho fue encontrar las Escrituras. Cuando él empezó a leer las Escrituras, él descubrió que su temperamento fue mejorando. Así es que si alguien tiene un temperamento fuerte, lean las Escrituras. Y, pero el Papa, mirando la capacidad que, que San Jerónimo tenía, le encargó algo. Le encargó traducir la Biblia del griego, del hebreo al latín. El latín era la lengua popular de esos tiempos y fue como se llevó a otras personas. También gracias a San Jerónimo y gracias al Papa Damaso I, pues tenemos las Escrituras con nosotros. Tenemos también las Escrituras en, en la Santa Misa. San Jerónimo tenía una frase que decía, quien desconoce las Escrituras, desconoce a, a Jesús, a Cristo. Yo pienso que San Jerónimo estaba profetizando para nuestros tiempos. Porque sinceramente creo que esa frase va muy bien con nos, en nuestro tiempo. ¿Por qué se hacen tantas barbar barbaridades hoy en día? ¿Por qué se peca? ¿Por qué se roba? ¿Por qué se mata? ¿Por qué se adultera? ¿Por qué se trafica? Por falta de, de conocimiento de las Escrituras. Por falta de conocimiento de, de Jesús. San Jerónimo amaba las Escrituras sin duda, amaba los evangelios, pero también admiraba mucho a Jesús. El evangelio, como lo acaban de escuchar, es bien corto, tres versículos, pero lo podemos dividir en tres partes. Primero, Jesús dice, los discípulos admiraban a Jesús. ¿Cómo lo iban a admirar si hacía muchos prodigios, si hacía muchos milagros? acababa precisamente de sacar un demonio de un joven. Cualquiera, cualquiera se admira por eso. Aquí la pregunta para ustedes, para mí también. Cuando tú lees las Escrituras, ¿tú te quedas admirado de Jesús? ¿Lo admiras de lo que Él hace? Aún más, cuando has visto un milagro en tu, en tu, en tu persona, ¿Has admirado a Jesús? ¿Te quedas admirado? Y, pero no estoy hablando de un milagro físico. El milagro físico aquí se queda. Estoy hablando de un milagro moral. El milagro moral es el que nos lleva al cielo. La segunda parte se, sería cuando Jesús les dice, el Hijo del Hombre va a ser entregado en manos de los hombres. Jesús les está hablando de la pasión que iba a pasar, de la muerte. Le estaba hablando de, de la cruz. La pregunta sería, ¿cómo enfrentamos nosotros la cruz? Un ateo, ¿cómo enfrenta la cruz? Cuando tiene un problema de salud, ¿cómo lo enfrenta? Un ateo, ¿cómo enfrenta una crisis en el matrimonio? Un ateo, ¿cómo enfrenta una crisis económica? O una crisis con los hijos, que todavía es más difícil. Una crisis, una crisis de, de salud, muchas veces se quitan la vida. Una crisis del matrimonio, se divorcian. Una crisis con los hijos, los echan de la casa. Ahora, tú, 
y yo como católicos, como casi diáconos, ¿cómo enfrentamos la cruz? ¿Cómo enfrentamos la cruz? ¿Cómo enfrentas una crisis de salud? ¿Cómo enfrentas una crisis matrimonial? Y ahora más difícil, los que tenemos hijos grandes, ¿cómo enfrentamos la crisis cuando los hijos que son adultos que creen que, que van por muy buen camino y nosotros sabemos que no? ¿Cómo enfrentamos eso? Hay dos maneras. Primero, aceptando la cruz. Señor, por ti la acepto. Por ti acepto la cruz. Pero también pedimos ayuda. Señor, por ti la acepto, pero ayúdame porque yo solo no puedo. La tercera parte, dice que ellos no se atrevían a preguntarle acerca de lo que estaban pasando. Nuestra, la pregunta para nosotros, cuando no entendemos la situación que estamos pasando en casa, ¿dialogamos con, con el Señor? Le preguntamos, Señor, no entiendo por qué me está pasando esto, pero tú dime, porque todo tiene una, una razón, pero muchas veces no sabemos. Pero tampoco estoy diciendo que hay que cuestionar a Dios, hay que preguntarle, hay que dialogar con, con Dios. Hermanos, cada 30 de septiembre es la fiesta de San Jerónimo. Pidámosle hoy que nos ayude a amar las Escrituras, que nos ayude a amar a Jesús, que nos ayude a aceptar la cruz, porque Jesús ya lo dijo. El que quiera venir en pos de mí, niéguese a su sí mismo, agarre su cruz y, y sígame. Que nos ayude a aceptar la cruz. Y por último, si no entendemos lo que está pasando en nuestra vida, dialoguemos con el Señor, que seguro, seguro Él nos va a dar la respuesta. I get more nervous when you guys, the father will, honest. That's okay. Well, that's natural. You're very comfortable and um, very, very good. I would say in the gospel, you you have a, a lean like this when you're, um, yeah. so you're comfortable. And I, I'm looking at the camera and you're, you're, you're like that. But it's comfortable, right? Like I'm standing right now a little bit that way. But in the gospel, I would, I would stand straight. Yeah. And, and don't don't hang on so much. You can you can put your hands like this or down. Watch your place. I see. Um, porque uno se enfoque en el, en cómo estás parado. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, durante la homilía, yo pienso que está bien. Porque es, es uh, como una conversación. It's like a conversation. But I think in a homily, you should you should you should be straight up and down. And um, so no people are not focusing on your posture. You don't want to distract from the message. Great message. Yeah. Great message. Yes. Algo más? Is the pearl how do we fix our problems? Is the pearl how do we fix our problems? How do we face our problems? El mensaje principal. El mensaje principal. Yeah. I mean, well, it had three, but mainly the cross for me. Very good. Costa Mesa, California, Martin Concha. Evangelio, Evangelio. Luke 7:10, 7:1. 
10, uh, 7, 1 through 10. We'll put the translation up in a second. Listo. En aquel tiempo, cuando Jesús terminó de hablar a la gente, entró a Cafarnaún. Vi allí un oficial romano que tenía enfermo y a punto de morir a un criado muy querido. Cuando le dijeron que Jesús estaba en la ciudad, le envió a algunos de los ancianos de los judíos para rogarle, que viniera a curarlo. Ellos, al acercarse a Jesús, le rogaban encarecidamente, diciendo, ¿Merece que le concedas ese favor? Pues quiere que nuestro pueblo y hasta nos ha construido una sinagoga. Jesús se puso en marcha con ellos. Cuando ya estaba cerca de la casa, el oficial romano envió unos amigos a decirle, Señor, no te molestes porque yo no soy digno de que entres en mi casa. Por eso ni siquiera me atreví a ir personalmente a verte. Basta con que digas una sola palabra y mi criado quedará sano, porque yo, aunque soy un subalterano, tengo soldados bajo mis órdenes y le digo a uno, ve y va, a otro, ven y viene. Y a mi criado haz esto, y lo hace. Al oír esto, Jesús que yo quedó lleno de admiración y volviéndose hacia la gente que lo seguía, dijo, yo les aseguro que ni en Israel he hallado una fe tan grande. Los enviados regresaron a la casa y encontraron al criado perfectamente sano. Palabra del Señor. Dentro de nuestra comunidad hay una familia que la mamá hace cuatro años le dio cáncer. El papá y sus hijos empezaron, lógicamente, muy, una tristeza muy grande. El papá habló conmigo y pidió que hiciéramos oración por esta familia. Posteriormente, la familia empezó a pedir oración por su mamá en el transcurso del tiempo como todo, como toda una lucha contra el cáncer. Habían momentos muy difíciles cuando comenzaban a tener sus quimioterapias y parecía que todo fuera mal. Pero sin embargo, con las oraciones, con el tiempo, con la fe, esta persona hoy en día goza de una muy buena salud. Claro, va a tener que seguir haciendo sus chequeos personales cada, cada que el doctor le ha dicho pero definitivamente se ha encontrado muy, muy, muy bien. Pudimos palpar el, este, el poder de la oración. Muchos compañeros de la comunidad fuimos testigos de lo que significa orar por alguien. Pero más que poder de la oración, yo puedo decir que es una manifestación de amor de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Una manifestación porque Él se hizo presente. Hoy en el Evangelio encontramos también un centurión en el cual también estaba pasando una, una experiencia muy similar. Podemos encontrar en el centurión cuatro virtudes. La primera fue fe. El centurión nunca perdió la fe porque en los momentos muy difíciles de su vida, cuando su criado estaba a punto de morir, él pudo decir... Ya no hay nada que hacer, me tengo que preparar para que esta persona pueda tal vez fallecer y enterrarlo dignamente. Pero no fue así. El centurión nunca perdió la fe. Él tuvo la esperanza de que un día este criado suyo pudiera levantarse. Ese es el llamado que nosotros tenemos hoy en nuestra vida. 
cuando nos acercamos en la oración con Jesús. No perder la fe. A pesar de que en ocasiones nuestras peticiones parezcan que no son escuchadas, nosotros debemos de insistir como lo hizo el centurión. La segunda virtud que le encontré al centurión fue la humildad. ¿Humildad por qué? Porque él siendo un centurión romano que tenía a cargo a mucha gente, él reconocía la posición que tenía como centurión y sin embargo, él fue a los judíos a pedir ayuda. En su humildad, nunca él perdió quién es, pero se apoyó de los amigos. Esa es otra virtud que nosotros debemos de poner en práctica, apoyarnos con nuestros amigos, apoyarnos con nuestros compañeros para poder interceder por nuestras necesidades, que no nos dé pena, nos sintamos mal, porque todos necesitamos de alguien. Y a través de esa humildad lo llevó a hacer obras. Por esto no, él no perdió la humildad. Él, los judíos dicen que intercedían por él porque él había hecho una sinagoga. En nuestra vida también tenemos que caminar con obras. Las obras de misericordia. Y la última virtud fue el amor, el amor por el hermano. Él se acercó a Jesús. La lectura nos dice que el centurión amaba mucho a su criado. Él se acercó a Jesús, pidió ayuda, pero especialmente no le faltó el amor. Cuatro virtudes muy importantes que nosotros debemos de tener para agradar a Jesús. La Escritura dice que Jesús que Jesús este, quedó admirado. ¿Por qué? Por la manera de actuar de este centurión. Es la misma manera que hoy en día nosotros podemos hacer para agradar a Dios. Orar con fe, orar con humildad, haciendo obras de caridad y con amor al prójimo. Un día, alguien de la comunidad necesitado o con un problema serio se va a acercar a ti y te va a decir intercede por mi problema ¿qué es lo que vas a hacer? solamente te vas a acercar y tal vez en tus oraciones de la mañana hacer un rosario por él y, de, y esto fue todo no, tenemos que sentir estas cuatro virtudes que el centurión pasó fe, humildad con obras y amor al prójimo. Cada uno de nosotros estamos llamados a ser intercesores. Amén. I thought it was a great message and a, and a challenge to us, and, and so I, you know, it, it hit me. It was good. And it was a message for deacon candidates, very much tailored to Paparellas. Very good. Knowing your audience, more of that preparation. You need to pull it out of a, a file somewhere. It's for you. Otherwise, else? El nivel de el volumen, tal vez más, más. Especialmente con los puntos muy poderosos, hay que aumentar el énfasis con tu voz. Sí, gracias. Okay. Anybody else? Fine, you can do it in Spanish or English? English. English? Okay, no more. I'm going to make you work. Either one of you then. Okay.
on the gospel on the gospel correct okay. yes please saint vincent de paul Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Two weeks ago, I made plans to go to the Orange International Street Fair. It's one of them orange, and I was going to go on Saturday during Labor Day weekend. Um, it's a chance for me to pour some cold beers for some customers, and it's a fundraiser for my kids' judo club and um, Servite Wrestling. Um, but the Holy Spirit had a different plan for me. Um, that Friday, I got a text from my classmate, Pete Morales. And he uh, asked me if I wanted to do some apostolic action. He asked me if I would join him while he MCs to, um, and watch, and then actually altar serve with him at a wedding. So I let go of my plans to go to the Orange County International Street Fair. In today's gospel, we see that Jesus is calling on his apostles to let go of quite a few things. He's also asking them to put their trust in God. Um, and in Luke's gospel, there are plenty of examples of that. You know, we look at Mary's fiat. She put all her trust in God. And then la in last week's readings, we see St. Peter, who is letting go of his nets. He's letting go of his business. He's letting go of his families to follow Christ. So um, it's a very important thing that uh, we continue just to hear that and have that faith in God to let go of stuff. Um, he's also telling them to let go in the gospel reading today. You know, let go of your no knapsack, no extra tunic, uh, no money. It's quite the opposite of what I did when I worked this wedding with Pete, when I served with him. I took an extra all. I took my backpack, which my wife calls my security blanket. I took my wallet and, you know, and money. And uh, turns out when I get there, I was provided with a much more beautiful owl that I got to serve in. Um, I never even looked at my backpack. And uh, I got taken out to a very, very nice lunch. It was awesome. So I put my trust in God. And we all have to do that. We have to continue to put our trust in God. So as we continue on our pilgrimage in this thing called life, and we continue towards ordination, what things do we need to let go of? I'm used to moving, so I, it's hard for me to stand still. You got the two minute rule going there. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Get in and get out. What feedback do you have for your brother? Conversational. Conversational. Personal. Personal. Yeah, it's very appropriate again for this room. Everybody knows Pete. I don't know. If, I don't know if you'd mentioned Pete in front of your congregation. Right. So right who's right, Pete? Right. Yeah. But uh, yes. 
uh, but that was very appropriate for this group. Anything else? We got away from the ambo. Yes. That's pretty bold. That took a lot of courage. Yeah. Do you normally do that? Or were you trying I, I to do, experiment? If I, get the, if I get behind here, I start holding on to it and I do the lean like uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, yeah, try and move. I try and do the one, two, three. Yeah, yeah you were moving around a lot. Yeah. You were like this yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then at one point you were doing this. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay. So you've replaced holding on yeah. to holding on here. Yeah. Right. And uh, I noticed that because I was looking for it. I don't know if anybody else. <laughs> Sometimes you were using your hands, which is good. You got more conversational. Mm -hmm. You smiled, which was great. You were John. You were putting on a persona as a preacher. So I thought that was really good. I thought it was great that it, it's often good to be short and get right to the point. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. We don't have to get through every line of the gospel or explore every, you know, <clears throat> give you something for next year. You know, so, yes. so but... Those make it easier to take away, I think, uh, for the day. You can get in and get the point. And I, and I need to work on that. But uh, I thought that was fabulous. And he used a technique at the end with a question, and then he walked off. There wasn't this grand finale of a you know, symbols clashing and you're building up to it. And that's, I think, for effect, you did it. Uh, you don't have to do that every time. I've heard critique of one deacon who does it every time. And the pastor says, well, people are waiting for the ending. Where is it? So use it. You left. It was good that time because you left with the question. What do you need to let go of? And I think that was, gave us something to think about. I thought it was, it was also very good that he just uh, organically included humor in, in it. And it just puts everybody at ease. And, and opens you up to listen, so it's good. Yes. Voice was good. A few ums in there. You can watch the tape and see. Remember, pause in between thoughts. That gives you a chance for more effect as well. More eye contact. All right, good job. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. And I like how you took a risk. This is the place to take a risk to try something. A risk away from this ambo, I should say. Juan Ochoa in English, right? I'm practicing here. Very good. Take, stretch yourself. Do you want to use the uh, first reading or the gospel or gospel. both? Gospel. Gospel. There's your microphone. If you can put it on. We have Luke 8. 19 through 21. Are you going to do it from here? Or are you going to be a... No, I'm not going to be a John. <laughs> not yet. There's only one John. There's only one John. Test one, two. Ready? Have you ever been in an area where it's really crowded because there is something going on? It could be like a show, an event, or someone selling something, etc. And you can't get to the front to see what's taking place. And you have to sometimes be on your tiptoes to be able to see or stretch your neck as much as possible to be able to see. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. I imagine that they went to be with him as well as some of the people that were part of that crowd, but only some of them. Others I can imagine that were there only because they saw 
that big crowd and probably said to themselves, let's go see what's going on. What's happening out there? Only to be a part of what was happening there. And this happens a lot in our parishes. Sometimes we have big crowds only to be a part of it. Mass would be one of the best examples. We go to be with Jesus and have that encounter with him. But what happens after Mass ends? We try to be the priest to get out of the, out of the parish. We don't wait for the final song to end. And, when, and then what happens in the parking area? We have people hurrying up to beat the other to leave the, the premises. We even try, we even see pedestrians and we get mad at them because they're in front of us. And we also hear that music blasting in the cars. And to top it off, some of them burning rubber. What about when we have our processions? It could be a celebration of our saint, our mother, or a procession with the Blessed Sacrament. And our priests, with that enormous love that they have for us and that patience, ask us to please join the procession behind. And what do we see first when we do the processions? We see people in front of the procession. We see people on the sides because they don't want to walk. Or we also see people when they go, when, when they go to the place where the procession is going to end because also they didn't want to walk or, or take that walk with us. What is that crowd looking for? What is it that we are looking for? Are we really there because we want to get to know him? To have that intimate relationship with Jesus? To walk and follow him? Or are we just there to go through the emotions? Just because it makes me, makes me feel good for a moment, and then I forget about it. Today, Jesus is asking more from us, and he is very clear. Your, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, and they wish to see you. And he said to them and replied, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. It's not, that he has, it's not that he's being rude, disrespectful, or not giving her mother her place. He was focusing on all that crowd and all of us that are listening right now. His mother and brothers went to him because they knew what he was capable of. Because they knew that he was able to help them in what they needed. Or maybe they just wanted to be at his feet. To be in his presence because they had already listened to his word. Jesus recognizes who are his brothers, and a true brother in Christ is one that hears his word, believes in Jesus, one that thinks and acts like Jesus, one that shares the same passion, that same love for Jesus. That's when we are able to form that bond, that family, that is when we come to share the same father, the same mother, and when we can call each other brothers. Only then we will be able to act in accordance to what we are reading and learning. Only then is when we will be able to truly see Christ and others and show to others Christ through our actions. And believe me, I have seen him and felt them through all of you. Our teachers, priests, religious sisters, and through our formation leaders that have taken the time to share what God has given them. Walking through, together through five years of formation, praying together the homeless missions, visiting the people in the jails and the hospital ministry has really helped me to grow in my relationship with Jesus, through all my new family of brothers and sisters that showed me that love that only Christ gives, that pure, true love that is there to help out 
when we are going through tough situations and sickness, to know that you have people that give you words of inspiration, words of support, who share that knowledge, that pray for you, that walk with you on your, on your journey, on the good and the bad that happens in our lives. This is what God wants and needs from us. The question is, are we part of that crowd that just listens but doesn't act? Or are we ready to ask our Lord to help us to put his word in practice? Let us ask, my brothers and sisters, that God continues to help us to listen to his word, bring it to our hearts, and continue to put it in action and to have that privilege of having Jesus recognize us as his brothers. Thank you. Okay, any feedback from what? Warmed up? What do you mean by that? You started off reading a lot. And then you just started talking more. It was uh, warmed up. Anybody agree or disagree? I want you to answer a question. Do you remember at our retreat, the one we saw in front of the Blessed Sacrament? The power, the passion, the spirit. You had it here. But he had it a lot more there. And I said, well, I was sat back and I said, this guy's on fire. And um, you had a message that was there. Try and capture that a little bit more in your homily as well. But that was, it wasn't that it was bad. I think just a little bit more is going to make it more powerful because you've got it in you. Okay. I remember Esmeralda the last time she said, I give him a look sometimes, and he knows what what I'm telling him. <laughs> yeah, I miss her right now. <laughs> yeah, so she's not here, so she's gonna be in the pew. Try to picture you guys. That's her. <laughs> it wasn't working, huh? <laughs> so she she gives you a signal, it's like okay, let the spirit take over, because you have that, and that's one of your gifts. You're gonna be an excellent, excellent preacher. So just tap into it, and maybe say a prayer on the way up asking for that spirit to be upon you. It was there when you wrote it. I could see that. It was a spirit-filled talk, uh, homily, or reflection, we're calling them, but delivery. But uh, really good. And I think that was kind of what I saw. At first, it was uh, a little bit quiet and then building up, and then your personality became uh, to shine through a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, that's good. Nice job. Thank you. Jim? <clears throat> Okay, we have him right there, and do you plan to focus on gospel. The gospel. By the way, somebody asked about your first mass, and how much of it should be about you, and how much about the readings. Any ideas about that? Both. Both. Yeah, my, my pastor uh, he gave us some. Uh, Pointers that, that we should introduce the people that are are there um, as, as one of the things. Yeah, I think from our family. Yeah, you're both right. I don't think there's any rule about it, except what were you taught to do in your homily? Proclaim Jesus. We must increase. We must decrease. So don't make it about every step of your journey. Proclaim the gospel, illuminate the message of Jesus, who he is, and what we're called to do as a I would say 90%. 10% is going to be about you, but whatever. I didn't get to preach, but when I got a chance to speak, I thank the people that helped me on my journey. And that's made it more about them. And uh, I think people are going to get to know you over time. So I would just say, Preach as you normally do a homily. Put a little bit of something about your gratitude and uh, for you know, the parish, your family that's there, wife, of course, 
pastor for support and uh, what you're inspired to do, which is to serve the people. Really make it a, a good homily. You got time to prepare. <laughs> Oh, martyrs. Okay, Luke 7, 31 to 35. Mm These are not the memorial reeds, it's just this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. mm -hmm. okay, let me check the mic. All right. Testing one, two, three. <clears throat> So today's gospel reading is one of those readings that over the years I've read how many times, you know, how many times have we read it at mass, but it's one of those ones that I just pass along. I had no idea what Jesus was talking about, people playing the flute and not dancing and singing a dirge and not weeping. And, and you know, since we began this transformation in, in, in our formation, I've come to find these moments when I look at the gospel and I'm like, what? Rather than passing along now, I go and sit down and say, well, what do other people say about it? Let me look. Let me see what's going on. And, and, and sometimes it's I just didn't pay attention. And, and in this case, it was. So we have this uh, gospel where Jesus says, this generation is like uh, children in the square that say, I played the flute and you didn't dance. Oh, well, I sang a dirge and you didn't weep. It's bickering children. This generation, his generation that he's talking about, are bickering children. And my first response was, what about our generation? Have you watched CNN and Fox lately? Have you ridden in the car on a road trip with my family? There's some bickering there. But what's the point of this? He says, you know, this bickering in the generation is all about it's about me. It's about competitiveness. It's about uh, selfishness. It's, it's being in the world and not living in the spirit. We're not living in the spirit. His generation wasn't living in the spirit. And what does that cause? These things like jealousy and fighting and infighting and bureaucracies and so on. But mostly it creates blindness. We don't see the living spirit in others. And it can be complete blindness. And he says this in the gospel. He says, what happens is you become so blind that you can't even see the spirit in St. John the Baptist. And then he goes further and he says, you can't see it in the son of man. If you can't see the spirit in Jesus or John the Baptist, you have a problem. You are terribly blind. And you're led down a dark hole. And that's where they were at Jesus's time and possibly even in our time and probably in the whole point of the gospels is to every generation. So they've taken what's happened in, in, in Jesus's generation. They've taken this wonderful, unfathomable God, the creator of the universe who has taken their people out of slavery in Egypt, split the Red Sea, taken them to the promised land, the land of milk and honey, and they've transformed them into conventions and rules. And why do we do that? We have a tendency to do that. We, we reduce God rather than expand him because we want to know, we need to know. And when we form God to what we know, it's not God. But now that we formed him into what we know, we can, we can judge others. We can say, you know, you're not following the rules. You're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. You're not doing that. And he's saying, don't do that. Don't do that. Live in the spirit. Live in the spirit. Allow it to come into you. Allow it to overflow you. 
And when you do, when that shower comes into you, it's like going into a warm shower. I used to work at UPS many years ago. And I would come home and I'd be so sore and tired and full of dust. And I would get in that shower and it would race over me and the, there would be black dirt just coming off me. That's what he wants inside your soul. He wants you to fill yourself with that light and that love of God, the knowledge of God, and allow it to expand. And as John the Baptist says, as he increases, I decrease. We get rid of ourselves. We completely abandon ourselves. And now the light's within us. And when we open our eyes, we see God everywhere. We see him in the blades of the grass. We see it in the smile of a baby. We see it in the Eucharist. We see it in the eyes of other people that are living in the spirit. And when you see other people living in the spirit, and you start to connect with them like I do with you. You know what we call that? We call that the church. That's the church. It's not some building somewhere. It's us living in the spirit and worshiping to this God. This is the beauty of our faith. This is the beauty of what we come to know. We've been transformed over the last five years. That's a wonderful thing. And we're coming to the end of that formation. But we're called to be to do more. We're called to be transfigured like Christ. We're called to allow that light to come within us and to shine out so that others see it, so that others are attracted to it, so that we can go forward and we can preach the gospel because we are the deacons of the word. That's what we're called to do, my friends. That's what Jesus calls everyone to do, not just deacon candidates, not deacons. Everyone in the church is called to do that, to glow with the spirit of Christ. And when you do, good things happen. Love and mercy and peace. And we find this restfulness, as St. Augustine tells us. What a wonderful faith we have, my friends. Be bold. Be Catholic. Woo. <laughs> Excellent, huh, Tim? Awesome. Yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, some objective things. What was his voice like? Level. Perfect. Perfect. Variation. That's what I noticed. It wasn't monotone. It was engaging. Conversational. You talked about, at one point, you talked about a shower, you know, and you just... We're showered, you know, with the spirit. And you, you underline a word. People get that image. And then you, you brought an example. I'm glad you didn't get into more details about your shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. That was enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, really good. Your hands were good. i say probably 90% of your time was looking over here. So just be aware. You're up here making eye contact people might say well what about us so I, he did a few times so um the light was kind of yeah <laughs> yeah that's and, part of your preparation yeah know your room and if you're not going to be using we were using this but you can turn it off i've been standing over here when i've been giving feedback because it just blinds me and for a couple moments it was good because it was really right on your face you could see it but other times there was a shadow okay so just be aware of that uh, but it's probably a good decision to stand here versus in the corner because you're, you're you're more distant that way. I was hoping if I forgot, I had my notes so I could step back and oh, yeah. take a, a brief look. Yeah. That was why I went there. Have so. you done that before in a homily or a reflection? Uh, stand stood away from the. No, because the mic is on the ambo, the so I haven't yeah. used a um, a wireless. Okay, but that's good practice for a faith formation session or a prayer group or. RCIA. I don't have an apple. Very good. Thank you. Good job. He was so powerful. Oh, I'll get some more. Uh, you know what? Um, the, the truth of the matter is that, uh, you know, I, I, I only outline bullet points and so on. And, and uh, lately. I can memorize the bullet points then. Well, no, I, I just, I, you know, I, I've read them over a number of times, but then I just let the spirit go. A lot of that may not even be in those notes. Well, I, I just thought it was amazing uh, how, how much you just were, uh, 
you own that that material. It's like it was part of you. So that was that was really great to see. That's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Have you spent much time in the courtroom? No. I don't. I don't I, you don't do the courtroom. Room. Okay. Yeah. Jim, was some of that though you just brought now, or was that some yeah. of that you were thinking at the house? You brought some of it in just now, where the Spirit's bringing it in. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes the thoughts are all over the page and the order gets mixed as I begin to deliver. And and if I if something comes to me while I'm talking and it seems to fit, I just go with it. It takes some discipline though to know your pearl. Because if you do come with you're just relying on the spirit to guide you there, the spirit can give you a lot of messages. <laughs> yeah. <That's true. laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Are you next? No, no. Can we take a, a quick break? Oh, yeah, we can take a break. But you, did you go already? No, I haven't. Uh, are you next? Yeah, I didn't do okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a break, then Hui, and then Mr. Rudy, right? Okay. Is that it? Those two? Okay, cool. Well, yeah, it's 850. Perfect. I know you say some of the date will be uh, there, but this is the uh, spiritual formation Sunday. It does have the nine seventeen. Okay, that's an older one, I think. When did you? This, this is the one that you sent. I just sent it. Yes. So I sent it. Oh. oh, okay. Thank you. I'm going to clarify that then. Yeah. yeah. We're not planning on it. Okay. So maybe you check with Lori, maybe see. Yeah. She's not. No, she won't be. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why we had that on there. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Food brought to my attention. We have a, an error on our calendar. We have a spiritual formation. This Sunday, we're not having it, though. There's no spiritual formation this Sunday. So that was on the Excel spreadsheet, I think. Yes, it is. Wait, you mean regular spiritual formation on Sunday? Yeah, regular. Yeah. There's, there's always. <laughs> No, no, we, it was going to be today. I mean, yeah, I do have it on my calendar. That's interesting. Because I remember in class, maybe something that they plan for before the ordination. Yeah. Well, I don't think we'll sponsor anything from the office. Uh, we all want to get together and pray, go to mass together. That's fine. No, but if it's, I don't ask for it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't ask for it. I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't realize that. So I apologize. I thought we were done with that. We have the 2028 class getting together this Sunday. We'll be here at 9 o'clock for Mass, for prayer, and then Mass at 10, and a potluck. It's just something very um, introductory for us. Right, right. Yeah. That's good. So, 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 okay. That's good. Yeah. You know, yeah, I had a conflict because I had, I have it. So we don't have this. Good because I have a catechesis thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Yeah. The RCA is starting up again. Yeah, I'm doing mine tomorrow. Too, right? yeah. 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 You're leading yours? One of them. Not me. Okay. There's, we have a person. You got a person. person. Yeah. Oh, Are good. you leading yours? Yes. You got you. Oh, that's new. No, I, I, I've been doing it for three years. Yeah. Well, it's my third. Yeah, we didn't have much of a program established. No, I went to the one. Yeah. The one. It's getting nice. better. Oh, it's nice. Thank you. Yeah, a good turnout, too. Yeah. It's, uh, well, well, it was have, like a Bible study, and then you had the kids. Yeah, we're going to do the uh, the uh, RCIA first, six yeah. to seven. We and moved it up to show up at seven. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it used to be 6.30 to seven. Uh -huh. We're going to do a full hour now. I just... 
have a little dinner uh, and conversation <laughs> and then um, some catechesis. And then if they want to stay for Bible study, they're allowed to do that. They're invited. Uh, we had a few people that just didn't feel comfortable ready to participate in the Bible study. So we want to make that requirement right off the bat for them. It was nice one. What's your, uh, what's the size of your... Uh, because I because I do them at St. I, I do have some canned presentations if you ever want to guess. Yeah, I've got to put together break. an opening one. I think it's going to be in, um, icebreakers and introduction. Yeah. I'm just saying if I feel really funny saying it. I can maybe talk to the creed or I can... You know. Yeah, well, we, so, prayer. we had so many people. I, I, have, I mean, they're all part of the one that's so I had yeah, cheers. Yeah. I'll bring you up for CST. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yeah, thank you. That one I'm going to bring up. Yeah. yeah. Nice to, like what you saw? You yeah. That that's, that's a, that was a, <laughs> in depth. It was, yeah. and I was racing. Yeah. 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 It would have been nice if you could slow down because some of those were really beautiful. I got would have been nice if you kind of. That's Drew more out of them. Yeah, yeah, but I had a lot of slides. Yeah. So I better think for Narcy Ake, that's you better do like one. I did the same thing. Yeah. Or absolutely. maybe just the beginning part, the uh, Kirigma part. And then just explain. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. the intro. And then there's Scouts Association next week. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sitting down. I'm having a business meeting. It's okay. If you want to so understand, they were all talking about it. Okay. Let's do vacation service thing, you know. Oh, uh, family. Father still out. Yeah. So no, I was. That's Better. pretty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kill you back. Yeah. In limited action next week. Yeah. 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 Catheter. So we're going to take that out tomorrow. Kind of a. Yeah. Yeah. If everything works well, then you know. Yeah. 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 A lot better when that's out. Yeah. I've had one of those ones. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, but there's just a funny story. That's better when that It's really funny. It wasn't funny at the time. <laughs> it is now. Actually, yeah. I was actually kind of laughing about it right away after it. Like, this is so dumb. I can't believe this happened. No. Did you all carpool with your wives here? Or? Yeah. Because I think they finish at 9. So we've got just a few minutes. Why don't we get on track? You don't want to get them upset before nation. No, I don't want to get them upset. Well, they didn't get spread, but they won. Both teams won. Okay, who's going to do the gospel? I think they finish at nine, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So we we get two minutes. Two minute homily. <laughs> Jim, you want to mic up? You want to go? Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's gone. Yeah, we heard about that one. He forgot his wallet at dinner. Yeah. Things you get, things you get to know about a person after five years. <laughs> Which one are you doing here? Uh, I'm going to do the uh, first. It'll be Revelation of the spiritual battle in there, and then also uh, John. God in heaven. An angel battle against the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I got a big act to live with. I'm going to go Jim and John here, maybe. <laughs> okay, so Revelation and then the Gospel? Yeah, John. Nathaniel under the fig tree. Okay. Okay. So make sure your mic's good. Where are you going to preach from? Uh, well, I got to follow a big act here. <laughs> John. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to probably sink. Okay, Jim, whenever you're ready. One, two, three, testing. That's good. Well, brothers in Christ, are we ready for our D Day? Well, if you read in the book of Revelation, Michael the Archangel was ready for his D Day. The supernatural epic war that occurred in heaven. You know, we read in the Creed every time we go to Mass, we believe in the visible and invisible. This holy war going on in heaven, and the victorious Archangel of Michael defeated the dragon, otherwise known as Satan, Lucifer. Where was Lucifer or Satan thrown to? Here on our earth. And it's very prevalent and obvious that Satan rules on this earth. We have war and, uh, you know, with Russia, other little micro wars going on throughout the world. But I think most of us are very familiar with World War II and that D-Day. 18 to 20 year old soldiers charging the shores of Normandy. Each of us as Deacon candidates, right now we're in those amphibious assault vehicles and we're charging the shore with our family in our church, our parishioners are with us, and we're charging toward the coast. Water, the waves are hitting us, the weather, the wind, we hear rounds going by. But the thing that I think and I hear every morning and every evening is all of us, why we're in these crafts, we're doing our morning prayers. You know, I'll hear this faint, I'm scared, I'm hearing this faint noise, and I'll peek over the, the craft, and I'll see Alfredo. And he's, hey, are you going to join us for morning prayers? Absolutely. We all do that roll call. And before you know it, while we're on this rough sea of chaos, we're saying the morning prayers for the entire church. We continue, we continue head toward that shore. I'm shaking. I'm nervous. Am I ready for this? Am I ready to meet that shore? I got this craft, armored plate, the gates up. I'm, I got some defenses here, but we're still praying. We're still encountering hardships of life, deaths and families trouble with our family members, losing babies. But we continue to pray, pray, and that's our strength. That is truly our strength. In a month, less, almost a month from now, we're going to hit shore, and that gate's going to come down. There's only one of us in this room that's experienced that gate coming down, and he's in the back. He's taking some hits. Him and his family, I'm pretty sure, never realized all the demands on this position of running the whole entire formation for the deacon program for the County of Orange. We pray for you. Are we ready for this gate to come down? Absolutely. Why? We've got three archangels that are going to be there with us. We've got Raphael, known for healing. What's healing? Reconciliation for all of us, bringing our families to confess our sins. That gives us that spiritual healing we need. Gabriel, the great annunciator. What an awesome message. We're called to do that too, along with our, our, our family, our parishes, to deliver that message of hope, of Jesus Christ. He loves you. He has mercy. And as Jim said, to live in that spirit of Jesus Christ and bring it to the streets. And then the greatest, Michael the Archangel, shed his blood, the Eucharist, 
partake in that holy body of Christ, consume him fully so he can consume us. We do that. And as all of us in our churches, I know last week, Dave showed it, we looked at the crucifix, but you look at those arms, that's our V-Day, victory in Jesus Christ. Pray, go to confession, receive the Holy Eucharist. We're gonna win this fight. Good job, Jim. Good passion. Yeah, he really nailed it, huh? He was passionate, engaging. He had a pearl, a good message that he delivered. Good imagery. Anything else? I think the gyms tore it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are letting loose now. You're going for it. Yeah. I'll change my name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Get to the green in one shot. Yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry for this problem. <laughs> well, <that's pretty. laughs> you know what it's okay you're all at different um points in your experience with this and we're all growing together so don't feel you need to do something spectacular we're not here to give a show but we're here to be effective in delivering the message of christ you did it in your own way you did it in your own way and we just keep trying and then growing i think uh, it'll all be well and it just kind of added a dimension. We already had a lot going on with his, his uh, delivery, but then that even added a, yet another more dimension to it. Yeah, it, and it's back to his presentation, too. It was it's powerful. It was enforced. Use that often. Dave, I know you did it. I mean, there's so much theology in just the crucifix. And there's one in every parish. And you can Put the attention right on Christ. Yeah. I like uh, I like the victory part because I, I never really thought about that. His arms are like that. Mm -hmm. Victory. It's the greatest victory for mankind was the cross. We defeated Satan right then and there. Amen. He is the. Amen. You mentioned the Eucharist. You're going to be ordained. We'll still say God willing. In the revival. You should have something in the Eucharist in almost every holiday. You don't have to stretch far no. in any in any in any gospel to include the Eucharist. So drive it home. Let people know that we're in this revival. Revival. Ready? Oh. <laughs> don't feel any pressure. You're, you're with your brothers here. Longest uh, gospel ever. This one here. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Say, told you it's long. A familiar one. <laughs> yeah. Where do you intend to preach from? Just the um, gospel. You no, know, you want to do it Oh, yeah, here? But, okay. but it's fine. That way I can adjust the camera. Oh, okay. Okay, just give me a second. Okay. Testing. Okay, we. Oops, sorry. All right, the parable of the sower. I don't know if you know. I mean, some of us could notice the method of the sower is um, 
it's not practical, right? It's a waste a lot of seed. So who would scatter, throw the seed into the path, known in it very well that your people are gonna stumble on it and the bird gonna take it away. And who would throw the seed into the soil full of rock, knowing that eventually it will wither, right? And same thing with the thorn, right? Uh, that is uh, not making any sense. And, but, but today we heard that um, the soil is not using the human standard. He, he wants to seed of all the soil everywhere. And that's showing the channel, the channel, um, the channel, the channel, uh, I cannot say the word, the channelosity of, of, of the soil. He wants to see the, um, the soil, whether it's bad or good, right? So we all understand that God is the soil, and the seed is the word of God that uh, from the prophet, from the patriarch, and from the Jesus himself. But sadly, not many people welcoming it in the old day. And to this, in the present day, what do you think? Is same thing? No, I think it's even worse. Because nowadays, there is so many thorns, so many rocks, and so many paths that endanger to the word of God. Each of us, <clears throat> is a soil. And upon reflect on myself, I can call, I can recall that someday I'll be like a path that blankly, you know, um, ignore or even reject, uh, disregard the word of God. And yes, deacon candidate or even deacon can have sins, reject the word of God. And some days I welcome the word of God, but my, with my stony heart, I won't allow it to take a root in me. So I'm, I'm a soil full of rocks, right? On better day, I do welcome the word of God into me, but then I also welcome all the pressure of life into it well. And eventually, eventual the pressure of life will choke the word of God out for me. And hopefully <clears throat> many days I have uh, become the good soil when I welcome the word of God into my life. And I, I think those days could be the, the day that we have uh, prepared for the Father William classes when I pray a lot to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, but the, the good thing is God, whether on what soil I am, I can feel God continuously show his God, his seed into my soil. And that is the good news. Don't you think, my brother and sister in Christ? So, because he know that the soil, none of the soil, is useless, whether it's good or bad. He know it that each of our soil is sacred and unique in its own way. And he want, and he he want to send his hope come with his seed, the hope that the when we have bad soil, with the hope that we can become a good soil. And the, the hope that he bring along with it is that when we have a good soil, the seed will be rooted, blooming, and bear fruit. Well, the, the blooming and, and, and bear fruit is, is the image of joy, happiness. And that happiness, joy, is actually pointed toward the heaven. Unfortunately, the, the soil is not always become good by itself. And how am I going to make it good? Here is my recommend, recommendation that I want, uh, and I invite you 
to practice. The first one is we have to cultivate the soil every day by, by dying to ourselves and to receive the temptation daily. Right? And the second thing is we have to appreciate God's unconditional love and His optimistic. He all know full well that despite the evilness, the pressure of life, and the worldly riches, we take some of the word of God away from us. But he know that some of the word of God will eventually reach our good soil, and it will multiply into tenfold. And that is good enough. Well, not only is it good enough to compensate for all the lost seed, but it will come abundantly. It's all well worth it. And that image is actually tell us about the optimistic for, our, uh, for the heavenly kingdom. For us, we cannot do it. But if we let God take root in, into our heart, and bear fruit, and then it will transforming us into the citizen of the heaven. And last but not least, we apply that same gen oh, I can't say the word, gen generosity and the optimistic of God towards all the people. For example, when we evangelize to all the people, man, we know that many of, of, of them will reject the word of God. Some of them may accepting it, but they may not do anything with it. But fear not. We, all we do is to plant the seed, and the Holy Spirit will grow it within them. So it's not our job, but it's God's job to do it. Thanks. All right.